get started, I'm going to give you, thank you, Raina. All right, so to get started, we are going to be on the website if anyone wants to follow along, or also this is where you find this information later on um, under the Thoroughbred Makeover tab on our website. This is the About the Makeover section. Um, so what is the makeover? Um, I know a lot of people here have probably been before or like Raina said, done your homework. It is the largest thoroughbred retraining competition in the world for retired X racehorses. Um, we are really looking forward to having all of you new people and all of you repeat trainers coming around. Um, we are going to be having the makeover this year October 9th through 12th, and again, of course, at the Kentucky Horse Park in Lexington. Who can participate? Any accepted trainer can uh, participate. That means once your application is accepted, that's who competes. So no one is competing that doesn't go through the full application process that everyone is required to go through. Um, we have professionals, amateurs, juniors, and teams who apply between the dates of January 2nd, I apologize if you can hear my dog in the background, January 2nd and January 19th. Um, you do have to have a jockey club registered thoroughbred and our, I'm gonna go through our um, horse requirements. The horse must be registered with the jockey club and have a jockey club, club registered microchip. Don't panic if your horse doesn't have a microchip yet. You can get one and have it registered with the jockey club. It's a very simple process. It is all spelled out again in the rule book. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. The microchip registration process and number are not needed at the time of application. So you don't need to panic and try to get that done before January 19th. Um, your horse must have raced or had a published workout on or after July 1st of 2022 and your horse must not have had more than 15 retraining rides prior to December 1st, 2023. As you know, December 1st was the first day you could start working on your second career rides. We do also have the broodmare division now. Many of you know, last year was the pilot year for the broodmare division. It went very well. We were super excited to be able to bring it back this year as a permanent division. Um, we do have some different rules for that. The broodmare division uh, requires that your broodmare must be registered with the jockey club as well and have a jockey club microchip. That follows the same rules. You don't need to have it immediately. It's okay if your broodmare doesn't have it, especially if they're born before 2017. Um, you must have one lifetime race or published workout on your broodmare. Um, broodmares do not have a specific time frame in which they must have raced or had a workout. Broodmares are also not limited to the 15 ride limit. Uh, they must have a reported foal or breeding by a jockey club registered stallion within the previous two seasons, so 2022 or 2023 for this upcoming 2024 makeover. Um, that does not mean that they necessarily had to have the foal, but they have to have a jockey club registered breeding. And um, any former broodmare that has competed in another sport in this different second career will not be eligible. All right. We're gonna go through, let's see. I'm going to touch on our, oh, let me remind everyone, juniors are 12 as of the 31st of 2024. We've had a few questions about that in the past. Um, you are considered a junior as long as you are 12 by the end of 2024, December 31st of 2024. Um, and that will be like the end of the competition year. And... We will move on to, did I cover everything with our ages, Raina? Yep, I think so. I think you got it. Okay, so we're going to move on to the application. So you can find, oops. 
I'll just touch on the resources first. Oh, and I'm going to go over to want to apply. Okay. Um, below in the want to apply section of the website, we have some very, very helpful resources. And this is also like a great landing page to get you to pretty much everything you need. Uh, number one is the rule book. Raina likes to call the rule book the holy grail. It will hold pretty much everything you need. Um, so that's a great place. To, you can access the rule book also um, under the compete section, but you can also access it here. Um, we also have our application. Um, the purpose of the application process is for RRP's application committee to make the best possible determination to make sure that you'll be able to safely compete and be able to restart a thoroughbred in your primary discipline of experience. The application will include things like your personal details, your writing experience, uh, references, writing videos, uh, a letter of recommendation from your vet and things like that. Um, to access your application, you will need an account. If you already have an account, please make sure you use the account that you've previously used. This will include all of your previous history. So if you're locked out or like you can't remember your password or something, please email us before making a new account because you will lose all of your history and that will affect you and how you apply and it'll make you have to do a little more work as well because we won't have that from previous years. Um, and it will also affect our records on you. Um, so make sure you check with us if you have an account or think you have an account and you're locked out of it or something like that. Um, but if you don't, go ahead and create a new account and log in. In your account, you can go to the Thoroughbred Makeover tab. Here you will first see a list of all the important upcoming dates. and you will be able to open your application. So the application can be edited here and saved prior to your submission. At the moment, that's all you'll be able to do as you are not able to submit yet. Um, be sure you start working on your applications as soon as you can. Um, you are able to submit starting January 2nd through January 19th. Uh, January 19th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the cutoff for applications. You will be able to submit applications past that time, but you will uh, assess a late fee for late applications past 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, January 19th. So starting off, we have basic information your name, your email, your phone number. It's really important that you give us the email that you use and check daily. This is gonna be our main point of contact for you with everything. And we occasionally will give you guys reminders of dates and important deadlines, things coming up. Uh, so it's really important that you have an email that you use and check or make an email that you use and check and stick with that one email for all communication. Um, it's also helpful for you to give us a phone number that you use regularly. We will never send you like promotional stuff. It's never going to be like stuff for logo wear or anything like that. It's always going to be makeover related uh, text. And that will be from um, a do not like do not send replies to that. That's always going to be from like a computerized thing. So we will not be able to read your responses to that. Um, it's usually a deadline reminder like SOS last minute reminder. Um, and if you ever have questions from that, you can call the office or email us. Email is always number one. Please have a working email. Um, moving on, have your address. Um, we will also ask for your date of birth. It's very important. We have a lot of people that will accidentally mistype their date of birth and not realize it and keep scrolling. We need to know your date of birth. Um, to make sure that you are put in the correct status like category. Um, we need to know if you're a junior, that's important for us to know, and, and it would affect any special awards you might receive. 
Um, it will also be very important for you to check yes or no to this question here. In the last 12 months, have you been compensated in any way for riding, training, or giving lessons? This includes giving lessons, including exercise riding at a track or any type of compensation. This could be reduced board or product. Um, so if you're working anywhere in any capacity, if you're receiving reduced board for that work, if you're receiving free lessons or something like that, please let us know. This would make you a professional. Um, don't panic. A professional does not mean you're competing against professionals. All across the board, everyone is scored the same, juniors, amateurs, professionals. You're all going to be scored against each other. So saying that you're professional is not going to affect you negatively. Please be honest with that. And if your status changes throughout the year, if you get a job exercise riding at the track, let us know and we'll change your status throughout the year and update that. Alrighty. So experience. Um, these next few sections are super important because this is what you're being judged on. Um, so in this section, you're going to fill out your horseman's resume. So this is going to allow the committee to gauge your experience level. The committee is going to evaluate this and effectively uh, to see if you are going to be able to effectively introduce a green OTTB to the discipline of your choice. So we will start with um, what discipline you're most likely going to enter. This is not going to lock you in to the discipline you choose. Um, we just ask this so we have an idea of what you plan to do and we're able to better, the committee is able to better judge your riding geared towards this discipline. Um, so Raina here, as an example, has chosen eventing. Let's see. Which division of eligibility? So this means what division, like what horse you're bringing. Are you going to bring a horse geared towards the broodmare division or retired racehorse division? And again, there's options if you have a horse for each or if you have not decided yet, if you haven't acquired your horse yet. How long have you been riding? Rain is going to make us a lovely profile. Over 10 years. How much experience do you have riding green horses? Six to 10. How many horses do you personally, oh, are you personally responsible for? Uh, how many years have you been riding competitively? Uh, show record. So if you show USDA, if you have a record with USDA, USEF, uh, AQHA, be sure to add that as well. So we're able to see any records um, and add your ID number below. And yeah, Pony Club as well. Very important to add that if you're a part of any. If you're not, no problem. Um, and then also list any other equine related affiliations you may have. So in this case, um, our imaginary Reina has been volunteering at a therapeutic riding center. Um, and she is also, uh, was a former member of her IEA team in high school and also competed on her IHSA team in college. So it's important to add those. And if possible, add the dates, um, add what level you competed at, give us as much detail as you can. Um, here you add or check any type of riding which you have significant experience. It's kind of up to your judgment what you consider significant, but we're looking for obviously like more than one ride um, out and about. So you can check any of these that apply to you. That doesn't mean you necessarily have to have like competed or, you know, ridden years and years extensively. So Imaginary Reina began taking dressage lessons and has competed up to training level and is schooling at first level. She's preparing to compete at a first level show in the spring. Uh, she regularly trains with a trainer and takes a few clinics a year. She mostly rides her own horse, who's an OTTB, and she's done the majority of the re retraining on that horse since he retired. Uh, and her dressage training and schooling, occasionally a trainer, We'll give her lessons to help her learn properly. Most recently, she scored a 67 in a training test and a 70.5 in training test three. Her, high, uh, her highest place thoroughbred award at the Example Farm Dressage Schooling Show on September 8th, 2023. So number one, 
just give us as much detail as you can. Give us dates, give us who you're showing with. If you have a trainer helping you, if you have a trainer hop on your horse every couple weeks, if you're going to clinics, if you're showing, what scores you're getting. Um, obviously this is a, a dressage show, so we wanna know the scores. If it's a hunter or jumper show, uh, like the example below, maybe tell us what you placed, um, tell us the level that you're competing at, tell us what you're schooling at. Any detail you can give us is a detail we would like to have. And Molly, I'm just going to interrupt you for a second. Um, I'm not going to have you read through every single one of these because I got a little lengthy and carried away, but I'm going to expand all of them so people watching the recording later can pause it and just get an example of different ways that we would like you all to elaborate in this section of your different areas of experience. Like Molly said, as much information as you guys can provide us is super important. And some of that might include competition information and some of that might not. Um, but, you know, who you train with, what level you ride to, if you train with anyone, if you're self-taught, um, the types of horses you ride, how long you've been riding in that discipline, or if you even ride in that discipline anymore. Um, but again, as much information as you can give uh, us and the application review committee so they can get a solid idea of your experience level. Don't like put them in the position where you are assuming that they're going to fill in the gaps. Like they can't get any information other than what you provide to them on this form. And now I'm done. <laughs> All, right. All right. So again, for the personal narrative, we're really driving this one home as much detail as you can. Um, these people don't know you. So again, as much detail as you can put, um, you're just putting more detail, you're painting a picture in their head, um, you're introducing yourself to them and um, you really wanna give them as much detail as they can so they can accurately assess you and your ability. Um, so please give us any additional experience that you think is applicable uh, that maybe wasn't part of uh, anything above. So um, Raina chose to mentioned that she's not part of a horse family, but she has had the opportunity to lease and own horses. Um, she also mentioned that she owns her own horse. And let's see. She also, but she maintained riding other horses at the farms she was at. And she mentions that she was a working student. Now we have, why do you want to enter the makeover? Again, this is your just your opinion. Um, we're not looking for any specific answer. This is not a trick question. There is no right or wrong. Uh, some people are doing this with the purpose to um, like run their business model as a uh, resale. And some people are doing this for fun. Some people are doing this because they have uh, barn friends that want a team member. Uh, someone might be helping out a trainer, like whatever it is share. Um, we're just curious. Um, so yeah, there is no wrong or right answer here. Um, and it's not a trick question. Do you currently, or do you plan to work with a trainer or professional? This again, not a trick question. Um, we're just curious what your plan is. So imaginary Raina here, uh, said that she plans on taking weekly lessons in dressage and, uh, once she's ready, she'll be moving on to jumping lessons as well as well as attending clinics. This again is just helping us paint a picture of what your plan is, what you're gonna be doing, and how you plan to expose your makeover prospect to noises and sounds and people and places and um, will give us an idea of what you intend to kind of like put them through to prepare them for the makeover environment. Uh, again, with describing your intended training uh, and preparation process that kind of goes along the same lines of we want to know what you plan on doing with them uh, you do not have to read all of this molly um i am <laughs> just again going to expand this so that everyone later there will be a recording of this and you can uh pause it and read it if you'd like to see a solid example of what we'd like to see um, Irene is very thorough she's very thorough um uh, she's much more thorough than real reina but um Going back a little bit to the question about 
do you plan to work with a trader or professional and asking if anyone else is helping you along the way? Like Molly said, it's not a trick question. There are no rules against taking lessons with trainers, whether you're a professional yourself or not. Um, the committee is going to want to know what kind of support system you have. A support system is super, super important to having a successful makeover experience for yourself and for your horse. Um, so there, there is, it's encouraged for you to work with a trainer. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, the committee is going to be happy to see that versus, no, I plan on, plan on doing all my, the training myself. If that's the case, you know, be honest with that as well. Uh, but you don't need to say you're not working with a trainer because you think that's against the rules. It is most certainly not. Um, and you can also just talk about who else is going to support you along the process. It doesn't have to be a trainer. That could be, you know, I'm going to have a close relationship with my vet and my farrier. I have friends and family that are very supportive. I have a friend that's done the makeover before, and I plan on leaning on her for some advice throughout the process. And then my novel here for please describe your intended training slash preparation process I'm not going to go through all of it for you guys, but in this, I kind of detail what ideally my milestones are going to be each month, when I'm going to start taking lessons, how often I'm going to start taking lessons, what I'm going to do in those lessons, when I'm going to start getting to schooling shows, when I'm going to start getting to recognize shows, what level I'm going to be competing at those shows from month to month, um, and just kind of ending it with, this is if everything goes to plan, um, you know, and I'm planning on making adjust adjustments as needed, depending on the horse's progress and my trainer's recommendations. Cool. All right. So references, you do need two references. They cannot be your family and they cannot be anyone that you employ. So if you're a trainer, you cannot have a working student be your reference. Um, and you do need to please let us know um how you know them um let's see yeah and we do like i mean a reference of good character is great we do want people that can speak to your ability um as well as just general horsemanship um and riding ability and yeah so moving on to the big one videos every applicant must provide uh at, at minimum a simple flat work video as well as a discipline specific video that are no more than two years old. We do check, no more than two years old. Uh, so the videos do not need to be produced specifically for your application. If you have a video that meets all of these requirements from a show this past summer, awesome. Feel free to upload it, that's great. Um, and you are welcome to clip multiple things together. Um, or edit your video maybe from a show to show all the things as long as it meets the requirements and as long as you don't cut out every single transition because that's one of the requirements we do need to see your transitions then that works as well let's see Oops, so, and just a very quick reminder sorry molly okay. uh, we don't have it posted on our website yet but i have put together a new V video guide PDF. Um, it breaks down all the video requirements as well as it has a bit of a table that's like, if I apply for this discipline, this is what my flat video should look like. This is what my jump video lo should look like. If I have one, and this is what my discipline specific video should look like. That should be up on the website by Friday. Um, if you would like it sooner, because you're trying to get your video filmed this week and you're not sure what to do, uh, send me an email, secretary at drp.org, and I'm happy to get you a less polished version of that guide. Uh, but our graphic designer is working on making it pretty for me right now. Uh, there also is a sample video on the Want to Apply page that kind of goes through the do's and don'ts and sh shows you examples of videos that would be acceptable to submit versus videos that wouldn't maybe because they're filmed the wrong way or they don't show the right thing, whatever it is. Um, and I'm going to pass this back to Molly now. I'm going to jump to the bottom about what type of videos we, or what format of videos we want before I go into um, what the videos need to be of. Um, so right at the bottom here, it says videos must be publicly accessible. That means that our committee members are not going to be logging into anything or needing special access for anything. Um, they are anonymous. And we're going to keep them that way. Um, so 
we recommend that you upload your video to YouTube or, Vi or Vimeo so you can give us a URL. Um, as you see in our examples, these are all YouTube links. Um, that does not mean you need to make like a public YouTube post. You're able to do like me, I can only see this, it's private unless I share my URL and then share your URL with us. Um, but if we cannot access your videos that way, we will not be able to access them. We're not gonna open um, videos that are not publicly accessible um, and you'll need to make them publicly accessible for us, please. Um, so starting with the flat video, your flat video will need to include walk, track, canner, both directions, as well as transitions. Um, so walk to trot, trot to canter, um, and then the same for downward transitions, canter to trot, trot to walk. Um, we would also love to see some halts in there. Um, and we don't need to see minutes long of walk. We trust that you guys can walk and hopefully all walk safely. Um, so like you're welcome to kind of shorten those bits as long as you just leave us some transitions, please. Um, and you will need to include the date that that was filmed so that we know it was within your two year deadline. Um, and then most importantly, we would like you to give us a description. So, uh, imaginary Reina gave us a wonderful description. This is a video of me on my 10 year old OTTB bourbon schooling training test three in a lesson with trainer at home. Uh, bourbon has been in retraining for about three weeks, so he's not a schoolmaster, but he is a solid training level horse. Three years, not three weeks. My bad. <laughs> he is big and can be hard to put together, but as long as you ask correctly, he's supple and light. Huge trot with a lot of natural impulsion and has taken some getting used to over the years. A lovely lofty canner. So um, it's really helpful if we have some background on the horse that you're riding. It is not going to be your makeover horse. None of these videos should be your makeover horse. This should be a horse that makes you look good. This should be a horse that uh, demonstrates your ability as a rider. We do not expect your makeover horse to be able to demonstrate a flat video, let alone a discipline video at this point, that would be very unreasonable. Um, so we do ask that you ride um, a decently schooled horse for these videos that you feel uh, shows you in a reasonable light um, that can demonstrate all of these things that we're requiring at um, an acceptable level uh, that you feel, you know, you, you look decent in and is a good reflection of you or an honest reflection of you. Um, so she included the horse's background, his age, what kind of horse he was. It does not need to be a thoroughbred. It doesn't need to be your makeover horse or can't be your makeover horse, please. And does not need to be a thoroughbred. Um, you can ride your trainer's old warm blood, doesn't matter. It can be a pony, does not need to be a thoroughbred. Um, she gave us background on the horse. She gave us background on where she's at, what she's doing, um, how she's riding. And she also explained that she, the horse is a little difficult for her to put together. She's been working on that. That's maybe been a touchy point that she's been improving on through the years. Um, so feel free if there's like a little hiccup in the video, address it, explain it. That's very helpful to the committee. Um, and that's helpful for us to see that you're addressing the issue and kind of like putting it together where you need to go. Um, so... That's the flat video, uh, jump video, again, web address, date, and then description. And you just the, want to go over the requirements for yes, the jump video? The jump video will need to be two six or higher. We will check for that as well. If you get a request that says, hey, we don't believe that this is a two six or higher course, you will have the option or the chance to submit a new video please do that. Please don't argue. Please just submit a new video at two, six or higher. Um, if it's difficult for us to see on video or, you know, it's not easy to tell, um, we will need a, a new video. Um, the other requirement is this is that this must be a course of eight jumps or more. Um, that does not mean you need to have eight jumps in your arena. Um, you can have fewer and jump a couple jumps twice. We're not going to be like sticklers about your course work, your course design. Um, so don't worry if you don't have eight jumps and a perfect layout. 
um, you can jump a jump more than once. Um, it'd be great if it was in a different direction or something like that. Um, yeah, and if there's any issue, double checking, if there's any issue with you um, getting your jump video uploaded for any reason, um, if you're not able to do a 2-6 course right now due to injury or whatever's going on, Um, or if you just don't have one or don't have the ability to have one when you're submitting your application, please reach out to Reina at the secretary at the RRP email um, and let her know the situation and explain what's going on. We will try to work with you guys and figure out if there's something we can do for you um, to work out a plan to get you a video uploaded later. Um, and just kind of like, we'll go situation by situation to see like what can we can do for you. Um, Okay, so again, Marina gave us a great explanation here. Um, explain the horse is lucky. Again, ex explaining the horse, explaining where she's at, explaining what they're doing, how they could be better. All that's great. So your third video will be a discipline video. This will be um, for like field hunter or venter. This would be a great time to do a cross country video um, as your jumping video will likely be like stadium jumping. Um, so for your discipline video, same shtick, URL, add the date, add a description. Um, if you are uh, selecting show jumper, you've already put a jumping video, you're welcome to add the same video if you feel that that's your best video. Um, and you've already put your jumping video up, your discipline video can be the same video. Um, you're also welcome to add a new one. Um, and if you have already refill, fulfilled your requirements for the video with the jumping video and the flat video, your discipline video can also be just another video that you think shows you off well. Um, for certain disciplines like polo, you can do like stick and ball work. We'd like to see obstacle work for ranch work, things like that. Um, there's a detailed description of things that you can show at the top of this. Um, but yeah, it can just be an additional video if you don't require more discipline uh, d demonstration. And one more comment. Sorry, Molly. Oh no, I'm going to start coughing again. <laughs> um, the jump video here is only going to pop up for you if you select one of our four jumping disciplines. So eventing, field hunters, show jumpers, show hunters. If you select any of those disciplines as the discipline you intend on entering, you're going to get this required jump video section. If you enter a flat, like a flat only discipline, so dressage, barrel racing, ranch work, freestyle, literally any of our other six disciplines, you're not going to see this jump video section. You'll just have the flat video, the discipline video, and the additional video. So if you're not going to jump at the makeover, you don't plan on it, you're not going to have to supply us a, with a jumping video at all. Uh, but because I selected eventing as my discipline, I have that jumping video section. So if you're doing barrels, you'll have your standard uh, flat video, and then your discipline video will be a video of you running the barrel pattern. Um, and then I will uh, let Molly talk a little bit more about additional videos if she would like to. Okay. Um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Raina, if someone selects like dressage and then they decide, oh, maybe I do want to do jumping. Are they able to add a jumping video in the discipline? Yeah. So or... if they, if yeah. you're someone that intends like your primary discipline, you intend it to be dressage, but maybe there's a chance that you're going to also do show jumpers, show hunters, eventing, whatever and you want to get your jumping restriction lifted ahead of time. Um, so pretty much everyone who applies, you come into our system with an automatic limited non-jumping discipline, which means when you get to final entry in August, which is not really something you guys need to worry about right now, but I'm gonna explain it anyway. Um, when you get to final entry in August is when you select your disciplines. If you have that limited non-jumping restriction, you're not gonna be able to select to enter any of our four jumping disciplines. but. Let's say you enter dressage and you think there's a chance that you might jump at the makeover and you have a jumping video ready to go. You could use this additional video section to add that jumping video ahead of time. Or let's say you enter in dressage here in January and then come May, you're like, you know what? I think I want to do show jumpers as well. Let me get my limited non-jumping restriction lifted. You're going to go ahead and you're going to email me, secretary at the rp.org. 
with a link, uh, just as you would on the application, to a video of you jumping a, a full course of 2.6. So you have the ability to get your jumping restriction lifted by submitting the appropriate video over email um, anytime until I believe June 28th. So you have over six months from when applications open to actually get a jumping video in and get your jumping restriction lifted if it's not something you're able to get to us during the regular application period. Awesome. Okay, moving on to uploads. Um, so for now, the vet letter will be the upload that you see. Um, you do need to upload, please, um, in a PDF, or you can see JPEG um, or any of the other acceptable. It will not work if you try to upload a straight Word document. Um, we will not be able to open your file. You will not be able to open your file. So please make sure that you save it in one of the appropriate file options that are listed above. Your vet letter um, is a veterinary recommendation letter. So we ask that it please be on letterhead, your vet's letterhead, um, that it is dated and that it is signed by your vet. This must be an equine vet, the, like signed by your DVM, um, an equine vet, not, not your dog's vet, equine vet that sees your horse. Um, you do need a new letter every year. So if you have uh, competed previously and you have your vet letter from last year, that's not going to work. You will need it again this year. Um, that's a rule. Every year you will need a new vet letter. I know that can be a pain, but you have a good amount of time to get it. Um, let's see. And I do, we can up, oh, we're moving on. I was going to say we can upload that later if needed, but it is great to get it uploaded now. Um, so it is not forgotten about and holding you up from being able to submit things. Um, so moving on to entries, you will be able to select your entry type here um, as an individual, a team member, or a team captain. Raina is an individual with one horse, and she would like an all-purpose saddle pad. So you can be uh, multiple entry types. Um, you can as she's putting in, uh, be an individual and be a team member. So I might be competing on a team with Reina, but I've also brought my own personal horse. You can be involved with up to, but no more than three horses at the makeover. So I might have uh, two of my personal horses as an individual, and I may also be a team member. Um, the saddle pad that you select here, that is the saddle pad that you will be handed at check-in on October 9th or 10th um, at the horse park. So when you go through your check-in process, you will be handed the saddle pad that you choose here and now. Um, you do not need to choose a saddle pad that like uh, goes with whatever discipline you plan on. So I might be running barrels, but I can still select an all-purpose pad because maybe I want to use it on the jumper I have back home. That's perfectly fine, but know that whatever you choose is what you're going to be handed. Um, and it's not going to be shipped to you. It will be handed to you at check-in. Um, and don't forget to take it. Don't forget to ask for it and don't forget to take it. Um, for the teams, you will be asked to list the team captain. So here, Reina is a team member and I am the team captain. The team member will not be responsible for paying any fees or completing the horse registration later on. That will only be a team captain. So as a team member, Reina also had to list um, her affiliation with me. So if I'm the team captain, I'm the one responsible for making sure the fees get paid and um, I will be the one that she's associated with. And then the team captain will be also responsible for listing all the team members when they fill out their entry. Okay. Um, horse entries can be increased. So Raina can decide, oh, I brought one horse, I acquired another horse, I'm gonna make it two, awesome. But once your application is submitted, if you sell a horse along the way, 
Unfortunately, the fees that you have paid will be non-refundable because you've already been assessed the fees, the work has already been done. So you can always add a horse, but if you take away a horse, no problem at all, but the fees are non-refundable. And you will need to just email us to let us know like the status if you're um, adjusting your horse count. Just a quick add on that. So what Molly means by that is like, if I submit my application in January saying I'm going to bring two horses, um, I'm going to pay, you know, $150 per horse. If my application gets accepted, none of my registration fees, be that my application fee or my horse registration fees are refundable. Um, so if I can't go at all, um, application fees and horse registration fees are non-refundable. If I'm planning on taking two horses and I end up with one come, um, whatever the horse registration deadline is, it's end of July. Um, if I only have one horse by then, then I can only bring one horse that's totally fine. You know, we're not going to punish you guys for bringing less horses than you uh, applied to bring, but we're not going to be able to refund you that $150. If you email us, we are always happy to convert these fees to a donation and send you a tax receipt. Uh, but there is a real human that goes through and uh, reviews every single horse registration form when you register your horses. It is a lot of work. Her name is Sally and she's incredible. Um, but that is that is a person doing real work every time you register a horse. So just like your application is pre-screened by people like Molly and I checking for the requirements and then reviewed by our wonderful crew of application committee members, uh, there's work that goes into all of these things. And so once your application is accepted, it is non-refundable. If for whatever reason your application is not accepted, there is a partial refund and information about that is available in the rule book as well. And that's it. Awesome. Um, so as you can see below, uh, the fees will be totaled up um, after you make all your selections, your horse selections and your entry types. So every application fee is $200 per person. That doesn't mean per entry selection. So I can be or Imaginary Reina can be entered as a team member and an individual, but she's only submitting one application because um, she only has to apply once to be able to do both of those entries. Um, so she will be assessed $200 for the application fee. And then it, again, as Reina said, will be $150 per horse. Um, and that's for an individual or a team captain. Again, team members are not responsible for these fees. So if you're part of a team and a team captain has not paid the fees, it's not on you. Make sure your team captain paid the fees. The team member will not be able to pay the fees. That's not their responsibility. And sorry, one more thing. I totally forgot what I was explaining. Um, the horse registration fees and why those are not refundable. Um, on the flip side of things, if you apply to take one horse and you decided, May, you know what, I found the second horse and they're wonderful and I want to take both of them. Um, you have the ability to add another horse anytime until I believe June 28th as well. Um, all you'll have to do is email myself or Molly and say that you would like to add a second horse to your entry. We will send you the appropriate invoice once that's paid. We will adjust your uh, horse count, which is kind of what this looks like right here. Um, you know, in the case that maybe we have a wait list, your horse might, your second horse or third horse might get waitlisted, uh, but chances of that are very slim. Great. Awesome. So save or submit. Right now, you should just be saving applications. Um, you won't even see a submit application button yet. Um, Rain is special, so she has hers up. Um, so starting on January 2nd, you will be able to submit your application through 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, January 19th. Starting January 19th at 5.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it will be a late application. You will still be able to submit it um, until June 28th at 5 p.m., I would assume again. Um, but you will be assessed a late fee, which we believe at this point is $100. So you won't be penalized in any way other than you'll be assessed a late fee. It's You're not gonna have like an X mark on your application or anything. You will just have to pay the late fee. Um, so make sure you get your applications in. We do ask that if at all possible, you get them in as soon as you can. 
Um, there's going to be a really large influx of them coming in and we want to make sure that we get through everything in a good swift pace. And we know that everyone will have questions. It's totally fine to have questions. We do ask that you look through the rule book first. Um, as you can access the rule book online, you can, you know, control F, look for your question. Um, pretty much everything can be answered there, but if you have any Thing that you can't find the answer to after you've looked um, on the website and in the rule book, or you have a specific to discuss with us, um, please email secretary at the rrp.org as soon as you can. Um, we want to answer all of your questions as swiftly as possible, and we would hate for anyone to be emailing us at 4 p.m. Uh, on January 19th and not be able to get an answer quickly enough to submit their application and have that be the reason that they have to pay a late fee. Um, so be kind to us and send us your questions as soon as you can so we can answer them for you and you don't have to pay a late fee and can get your application in. And you will be able to save and come back and edit your application as many times as you need to as well um, until you submit it. Once you submit it, it is submitted. You will not be able to edit uh, any fields. And if you have um, an issue submitting, um, you will be taken, be able to go back and edit things. Any starred field, as you saw going through the application, there were lots of little stars on everything. If any starred field is left empty, you will need to go back and fill that in. So if for some reason you are not redirected after you submit, you will need to go back and just look through the fields and see what you're missing, what's grayed out. Um, once you are sure everything's good, you hit submit, you're redirected, you will be taken to the trainer waiver page. You will fill that out and I believe electronically sign it and then you'll be able to check out. Um, if for any reason you're not taken to the checkout page and not redirected uh, to the trainer waiver page, but you're not, seeing any empty fields um, and there's some kind of issue, you can also feel free to reach out to us. All right, I think that covers the application. So I just uh, hit save. And so as you guys see, it redirected me back to the homepage of the trainer portal. Uh, when you hit submit, it should redirect you to the participation agree agreement or trainer waiver. Um, if you somehow bypass that and you go straight to checkout, you will be able to come back to the pay the home page and hit sign participation agreement and fill that out and submit it. Um, once applications open for submission, you will also be able to. It's not here right now, uh, but you will have the option to upload your vet letter separately. Let's say you submit your application on the second and you get your vet letter on the third. Um, you will be able to upload that retroactively. We do ask though that you try not to submit your application until you have all four requirements. So again, that's your proper videos, that's your vet letter, that's your waiver, and that is pay your payment in full. So you're gonna hit submit, it's gonna take you to the waiver to fill out, and then once you submit the waiver, it should redirect you to the checkout page for you to pay for your registration fees. Um, so if you're waiting on your vet letter, as long as you know that you're gonna have it before the 19th, uh, I would go ahead and suggest that you hold off on hitting that submit button until you're able to upload that vet letter. Otherwise, you're going to get an email from me or Molly anyway saying, hey, thanks for submitting your application, but unfortunately, it's going to have to stay in a pending slash requires more info status. Uh, we can't pass it on to the committee until we have that vet letter from you. So it doesn't necessarily uh, get you anywhere to submit your application without those four requirements. Um, other thing is, you know, if you do need, like, if you need any help getting certain requirements met, uh, like Molly said, in regards to maybe certain videos, you can email us and see if there's anything that we can do. Uh, we definitely won't be able to, in the case of the vet letter, um, turn your application over to the committee for review until your vet letter's in there. But if you're trying to avoid a late fee, let's say, uh, you can email me with the circumstance and we can work something out um, or try to. And uh, yeah, so moral of the story there is if you have any issues at all, any questions, email us. We are happy to work with you guys as much as we can. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen and I will show my face again. Uh, 
And Molly, did you have anything else that you needed to cover before we move on to questions? I will add that any applications that are submitted in the window between January 2nd and January 19th, you should have your decision on whether your application was accepted or not on February 15th. Um, any late applications that are submitted, we estimate that you'll get a response back within about a month. That's it. Awesome. Well, at this point, uh, we are going to open it up to questions. If you guys have any, I see one in Zoom and a couple in Facebook that I will go over here in a minute. Um, so put those in the Q&A section on Zoom or in the comments on Facebook. And if you're watching the recording of this, you can go ahead and email us with your questions. Um, all right. So I am going to read these questions out. And Molly, if you know the answer. You could chime on in. If not, I will uh, go ahead and give give it my best shot. So Hallie wants to know um, if we haven't been able to compete slash have a specific discipline video, would a video of riding Western be acceptable? For that, uh, Hallie, I'm not entirely sure what you mean there. Uh, your videos do not have to be taken at a competition. Um, but you are going to be required to select a discipline of some kind. So if you are selecting, you're talking about uh, riding Western. So if you're selecting, let's say, barrel racing, you're going to need to run a pattern. That doesn't need to be at a competition. That can be at home. Uh, but you do need a discipline-specific video. If you're doing competitive trail, you are going to need videos of competitive trail-specific skills. You can film that at home. It does not need to be at a competition. Uh, and you can email me if you would like a list of different movements or skills um, or obstacles that we would like to see in a video like that. Same thing with ranch. Um, so there does need to be dis discipline specific skills shown. Uh, just either changing your tack or riding in a Western saddle is not necessarily going to meet those requirements. Um, your application is going to be assigned to a committee member based on the discipline that you select as your intended discipline for the makeover. So we have committee members that have experience in um, every single one of our disciplines. So each committee member has their specific area of expertise. And whatever you select on your your application, that's the lens in which your, your application is going to be viewed through. So if you're selecting barrel racing, you're going to have someone with experience in barrel racing, and they need to see you run a pattern to know that that's uh, hopefully a skill that you have and you're going to be able to transfer that skill over to a green thoroughbred in the next 10 months. And then I will move on to our question in Zoom here. Let's see. Crystal says, are we able to bring a personal horse to keep our RRP prospect company slash make the move less stressful? If so, do we have to pay the entry fee for the extra horse or is that just an extra st uh, stall charge? So Molly, I think you know the answer to that one. That one is just an extra stall charge. So yes. a companion horse is more than welcome. Um, you are able to, once later on in the process, you will be yeah. able to and uh, register your makeover horse. And at that time you will be able to register a companion horse um, and fill out a little profile for them. And at that time you will just be, um, paying for a stall fee yeah I don't recall what the There's, stall fee was <laughs> that's so the key here is that like this is a later a thing to think about a lot yeah. later in the process so you are going to there will be a small non-compete fee as well as the extra stabling charge that all gets assessed in August so you don't have to worry about any of that right now but short answer to your question is yes absolutely you can bring a buddy for your horse yeah. um Next question over on Facebook. Make sure that I, yes, we answered that one. Uh, Lori, would I need two videos for entry into barrel racing division? I have a ranch riding video from a show I competed in that shows transitions, walk, truck, canter, stops, lead changes, et cetera. Then do I submit a barrel racing video as well? And sorry, guys, I need to sneeze. I'm going to turn off my video. I can hopefully answer this for you. Um, so this would depend on what you are selecting as your primary discipline. So if you're selecting barrel racing as your primary discipline and your video includes all of the flat requirements as well as your barrel racing stuff, 
I believe that would be fine. Um, you could also cut that video in two unless it's completely intertwined. Um, then Raina might need to uh, pipe in on that one. Um, if you plan on having your ranch work be your primary discipline, um, or that's what you select on your application for now, then the ranch work would be your discipline video. And if your flat video includes some barrel work, I would assume that is okay for a flat video to include some barrel work as long as it meets all the flat requirements. So if I'm interpreting this question direct, uh, cor correctly, Lori, and if I'm not, please email me and we can talk about this further. Um, but it sounds like you're asking, you might have a video from a ranch competition of you doing a ranch flat pattern. And would that be okay for you to use as your flat video? Um, and the answer is yes, absolutely. If you're, if you're uh, intending on applying for barrel racing, but you have a flat video from a ranch riding competition that shows all the flat movements that we're looking for, you can use that as your flat video. Um, you still will need to supply a discipline specific video of you running barrels. Um, most likely if let's say you're saying you're wanting to apply for a ranch, um, if the ranch, if it's just a flat pattern video, it's not going to meet your discipline specific requirements. It will meet your flat video requirements, but not your discipline specific requirements. Even if it's from like a ranch riding show, if it's just a flat pattern, it's it's not going to meet the requirements as per our preliminary competition. So your ranch video would need to be, you know, crossing bridges, um, opening gates, uh, pulling something with a rope. Um, ideally, we would love to see some basic cattle work that could just be passing through a cattle pen, um, side passing over a pole, different movements like that. Again, we have a video guide that we will be posting shortly on the website. You could also email me for another list of those. Um, you are only selecting one discipline on your application, whichever one you think you are most likely to. You will be able to enter up to two disciplines per horse in August, um, but you only need to, you will only be selecting one primary discipline on your application so that we can just narrow things down a little bit for our committee. But that doesn't mean you can't use the additional video section. So let's say you use a different flat video for your flat video. You're entering in barrels in this situation. You put barrels as your discipline specific video, a video of you run, running the full pattern. And then you have a video of you at a ranch competition that you would just like the committee to see. That's what that additional video section is for. So you can absolutely still include that in your application if you would like to. Uh, you can just use that additional video section. And then Molly, you started to touch on it. You know, if you have a video that shows everything, maybe you start off with your flat pattern and then you go into the barrel pattern. Um, or maybe it's one of those extra long videos of the entire horse trial. If you're doing eventing, we've gotten those before, um, where you see the dressage test, you see the stadium round, and then you see the cross country, uh, course. And that is totally fine. Um, I will say I prefer if you splice it, um, into two or three separate videos rather than have one giant long video, um, because sometimes it just gets lost and maybe like during the screening process, we might think you're missing a video when you're really not. Um, but you are not required to split it up into multiple ones. We would, we would like it if you did, but you are certainly not required to. And I think that one covers that one. Let's see. We have another zoom Q and a, are riders allowed to have sponsors such as, uh, professionals or amateurs or juniors? Do you know the answer to that one, Molly? Yes. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Um, okay. Well, do you want to give it a shot or you want me to go for it? I believe the answer is yes, but I don't know the okay. uh, parameters yes. around that answer. So I will let Raina answer that and hopefully she won't cough on us. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. It, you are, regardless of if your status, your status, your status is professional, amateur or junior, um, we do allow people to have sponsors or fundraise for the purpose of the goal of the makeover. That doesn't impact your status with us. Um, it's just important to note that might impact your status with other governing bodies, whether that be USEF, USDF, or something else that might impact your amateur status. For us, for the purposes of the makeover, as long as those sponsors are for the purpose of the makeover, we do not, uh, that will not impact your status. And you are absolutely allowed to have sponsors. All right, back to Facebook. Do we need to have our horses before we apply? The one I'm purchasing won't be transported to me until after the application is due. 
No, you do not. Correct. You certainly do not. Um, yeah, I mean, many people will not have their horses yet. Um, some people wait until like right before horse registration is due to have a horse. Um, so you certainly do not need to have your horse yet. Um, it'd be great to have an idea of how many horses you will have so that you don't have to um, decrease your horse count and lose any money. Um, but yeah, you there's no issue with not having your horse yet in your possession or maybe your horse is just a dream right now and you're hoping you'll find one that will work and you're applying just in case you do. That's totally fine. Yep. We see that all the time. You know, we definitely have people that maybe already have their horses. This is, you know, something that they've been wanting to do and they, they happen to acquire a horse that's eligible. And, and then we have people that might go like, you know, if they're, if they're someone that retrains and resells often, they might go through a couple different horses between now and end of July when horse registrations are due. So you do not have to have a specific horse ready or even in mind yet. Um, this is just your first step into being able to compete in the makeover. This is saying me as a human being, I would like to compete in the makeover. If you have your horse already, awesome. If you don't, totally okay. Um, which Molly answered beautifully. Let's see. Um, would working a barrel pattern meet those requirements or just a full run? Um, if as long as you are, you know, running that full pattern, if you're just working the pattern, that should be okay. But if you would email me about that and kind of give me a little bit more detail about what you're thinking, I'm happy to expand on that with you. Um, I, if I'm competing in dressage and show jumping, should I take videos of both and submit as well as a flat video? So I think we covered this a little bit already. Um, that's going to depend on what you select as the discipline you are most likely to enter in. You're going to pick one um, and go with that. You have the option of supplying videos for both if you would like, but regardless, yes, you will need a flat video. Uh, if you are applying for dressage, a lot of times your flat video um, can meet requirements for both your flat video and your discipline specific video. As long as you are, you know, riding a horse with contact and impulsion, um, and you're doing 20 meter circles and, um, maybe there's a free walk in there and a halt in there. So you're doing dressage movements and you're riding in dressage style. Um, that likely can double as both your flat video and your discipline specific video. Uh, and, for pretty much anyone, if you have a video of you doing a dressage test or whatnot that meets all those requirements, you can use that as your flat video, whether that's for eventing or fox hunting or show hunters. Um, it's the flat video doesn't have to not be written in a dressage style, if that makes sense. Uh, bill of sale. Will a registration transfer with the registry showing the date? Um I'm not quite sure what you mean there. Um, we do not require a bill of sale for when you acquire your horse, uh, and nor do we require that the jockey club has the horse like in your name, because um, that is most likely not going to be the case for a lot of you. Um, Jen, our lovely web developer, looks like she would like to chime in here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to jump in. Um, if we have a horse that's already registered within our system and you go to register, if that horse is already there, you will need to provide a bill of sale at that time in order for us to transfer the horse within our system. Uh, if it's a brand new registration, a bill of sale won't be required. Thank you, Jen. Um, is it okay to submit a flat video taken during a competition with other riders in the ring as long as the video zooms in on the rider who is applying? Certainly. As long she as nods, it's yes. clear that it's you. <laughs> yes. As long as it's clear that it's you, you're clearly visible. Everything that we need to see, we can see there can be other riders in the ring. Um, I will add one more thing to that real quick. If you are sending us videos from shows any show but especially the flat classes where things can get a little muddled um if mom or dad or friend are recording please don't send us a video that's taken at this angle <laughs> or really shaky um 
I, I understand that that can happen. And that's really unfortunate if you have a wonderful flat class of that video, but that can be really difficult and also like very jarring for the poor committee member that has to watch that. Even if it shows you going around, we believe beautifully, it will not be easy to tell. So please don't do that if you yeah. can help it. Um, us that are pre-screening apps and our committee that are actually reviewing apps, they have a lot of videos to watch. And it can uh, it, it can be a little bit dizzying if your videos are super shaky or filmed at an angle where we're all watching them like this. Um, so please keep that in mind. Uh, Noelle, are we allowed to add a second horse that's not our makeover horse into our freestyle? Um, I'm going to make a quick answer to this one. Yes, but this kind of falls into the category of things that you do not need to be worrying about at this moment. That is a August problem. Um, that is not a December, January problem. So yes, you can have another horse in your freestyle, but that is something that we can talk about later on in the year. All right, looking, scrolling through some of these questions, looking over the application, the EHV vaccination, does this need to be administered by a licensed vet and have them give a letter, a, me a letter of administration, or can I administer with proof of purchase of vaccine? This is needs to be administered by a vet. This also kind of falls into the later problem, but it's also something that's very, very important that you um, get done correctly or else you won't be able to stay at the horse park, let alone compete. Um, if you have a vet that's willing to put the date of administration on your horse's health certificate, that's okay. Um, but absolutely not. We cannot accept uh, tractor supply receipts as proof of vaccination. We've had that happen in the past. Uh, this is uh, KHP rules as well as our arrival exam rules. Ideally, you're going to have proof from the invoice from a vet that says that administer this vaccine on this date. Uh, and all right, I'm going to do one last call for questions. It looks like I've gotten through just about everything. So uh, if anyone has any questions for Molly and I, I'm giving you about one more minute. Um and I don't know, Molly, if you have any any parting words while we wait to see if anyone has anything else. I have no more facts to offer. I'm no excited to see to everyone at the makeover this year. Looking forward to it. Thank you for being patient with me. Molly did a wonderful job. So everyone give her a little clap emojis in the comments. Um, she did a great job hosting her very first webinar. Um and I, this is proof that she will be hosting most of them to go. Congratulations on earning yourself that task. Um, so, so far it's looking like no more comments. Um, as Molly said, we're super, super excited to welcome the class of 2024. Um, and we're here to help you guys if you need anything. So uh, with that, if you have any other questions, please email us. It's secretary at the rrp.org or use our contact us form on our website. And I think that's it. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you guys in our inboxes. Yeah. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night.